Hi Grade 8 learners and welcome to Tumamina Teaching. Today we are looking at the first lesson of the first term focusing on the financial literacy component of EMS as most learners struggle with this component the most. My name is Ngosnati Koti and this is my Tumamina Teaching. All too often when we are faced with new work we are faced with a bunch of new concepts like these. In this lesson, we'll take some time to go through some accounting concepts that we need to go through before we move on to other topics. Grab your notebook and your pen, better yet your EMS workbook, and let's get down to business. What is accounting and why is it important? Accounting is the process of communicating, recording, and interpreting economic information like financial transactions. This overview of information helps businesses to make better decisions. It summarizes what the business has done with the money it has earned or borrowed. Every aspect or component where money is involved in a business, whether that is purchases, sales, services, or even transactions, needs to be recorded. The recording of such information is central to accounting. Let me put it like this, getting all of this to this is all accounting. We're going to be looking at service businesses and trading businesses, as well as ownership type businesses like sole traders. A business is defined as a service business when it offers a service in exchange for a payment. A service business sells time rather than products. So let's look at a few examples. Wedding planners, caterers, hairdressers, plumbers, doctors, and lawyers. So let's just look at these examples. All of them, they do something in order to get a payment back. So they don't sell any product. What they do is a service in exchange for a payment. Okay, let's have a 20 seconds challenge. At the start of the clock, write down as many service businesses as you can without mentioning the ones above. If you're watching this in class, remember the competition will be hot. So pens down after 20 seconds. Here we go in three, two, one. Okay, now that we understand service businesses, let's move over to trading businesses. A trading business gets its income from buying goods, merchandise or stock and selling it at a higher price. I'm sure you're all familiar with trading businesses. If you're thinking of a trading business, then you're probably thinking of this, this or this. Any business where products are bought at a price and sold at a higher price. Examples of these are wholesalers and retailers. A wholesaler buys stock at very large quantities from manufacturers or importers and sells them to retailers. Retail businesses sell stock at small quantities directly to customers. Examples of these are spa, checkers, and pick and pay. Macro is an example of a business that is both a wholesaler and a retailer. Macro sells in bulk and sells directly to customers in small quantities to the public. Pause for a moment and try to name as many trading businesses as you can. Okay, now let's move over to a sole trader. Well, a sole trader is also known as a sole proprietor. A sole trader refers to a business that is owned by one person who usually manages the business too. These can be service businesses or trading businesses. Remember, being a sole proprietor does not mean that you are the only person working there. It only means that there is one owner. There are few advantages and disadvantages of being a sole proprietor. Well, one advantage is that you are your own boss because you are the one who controls the full business you make all the decisions of the business one disadvantage of being a sole proprietor or sole trader is that you carry the heavy load of starting the business and running the business and you face the risks of both these things okay let's dream for a bit 
pair up with the person next to you if you're in class or if you're alone, write this down. In 30 seconds, write down what type of business you'd like to run as a sole proprietor. Then write down what that business would be and why you'd like to run that business. Okay, let's do an activity. I'm going to show you a type of business and you're gonna tell me if it's a trading business or a service business. So using your left hand, indicating that it's a service business and using your right hand, you'll be indicating that it's a trading business. Let's start with an example so you know exactly what to do. Example number one, the business delivers food. Is that a service business or a trading business? Correct, it is a service business. Left hand up. The business sells fruit and veg. Is it a service business or a trading business? Correct, it is a trading business. Right hand up. Okay, now since you've warmed up, you've got three seconds. Service business or trading business, left or right? Let's go. Business one, here we have a bank. Service or trade? Three, two, one. Left hand, it is a service. Business two, here we have a workshop that repairs cars. Service or trade? Three, two, one. Left hand, it's a service. Business three, here we have a shop selling processed meat. Service or trade? Three, two, one. Right hand, it's a trade business. Business four, here we have a small business repairing phones and selling phone accessories. Is it a service or trade? Both, because this business both provides a service and trade. It sells accessories and provides a service in repairing phones. Business five, this company sells shipping containers. Is it a service or trade? Three, two, one. Right hand, it's a trade business. Okay, lovely. Now that we've gone through some accounting concepts and have looked through different types of businesses, we're going to look at something that is very key in business. This is the general ledger. The general ledger contains all the accounts of a business. An account is where all transactions of a similar nature are recorded. An account in a general ledger looks like a capital T and it is called a T account. The account in a ledger has two sides. The left hand side is called the debit and the right hand side is called credit. We will get back to the general ledger as it is very important, but for now, this is all you need to know. Now let's talk about starting a business. What do you need in starting a business? Well, you always start with a plan, an idea, or maybe even a dream. Now how do we get this dream started? Well, you need money, right? Because starting a business requires a lot of money in most cases. And this money that you need is called capital. So where do you get capital? Some common ways are a loan from the bank, money invested from friends and family, and even your own money. Since we've got that covered, we're gonna move on to a concept called owner's equity. Owner's equity is a type of capital. It is the total capital contribution an owner has made into his or her own business. Meet Brenda. Brenda always dreamt of opening a very own bakery. After school, she took a baking course and worked for three years at a bakery to gain experience. Now she feels her time has come to start a small business. She needs 45,000 Rand of capital to start this bakery business. For five years, she was able to save up her own money and her friends and family gave her some money in support of her dream. In total, she was able to save and invest in a business 35,000 Rand but she needs another 10,000 Rand to get enough capital. So she went to the bank and took a loan of 10,000 Rand. Let's look at the capital in this way. So Brenda has gotten her own money of 35,000 Rand from her friends and family and from her savings. And she's also managed to take a loan out from the bank of 10,000 Rand. 
So in total, we have a total of 45,000 Rand of capital. But what owner's equity is, is the 35,000 Rand because that is the money that she put into the business. The 35,000 Rand remains Brenda's property and if the business closes, she gets the value of the owner's equity back. If Brenda decides to draw money from the business for her own personal use, these withdrawals are also deducted from the value of the owner's equity. So if she withdraws 5,000 Rand from the business, only 30,000 of the owner's equity is left. Let's move over to income. Income refers to money received by the business. With a trading business, one receives money for products that are sold and a service business offers a service to a client and then receives money in return. Income increases the owner's equity. Some examples of income may include current income and rent income. Current income is money earned by the business for services rendered. Rent income is money earned by the business when renting out premises. Perhaps Brenda doesn't need her entire premises and rents out the garage to a craftsman. So while income may refer to money coming into the business, expenses refers to money going out of the business. Expenses are payments made by the business for goods and services that are necessary to run the business on a day-to-day -day basis. Here are some examples of typical expenses. Rent paid, the telephone bill, water and electricity used in the premise, salaries and wages that are paid to workers of the business, a trading license, which is something that you need to perform the service or to sell the goods for the business, stationery such as paper, print cartridges, and even consumable goods, which is any item used to perform the service. Great, now that you know the difference between income and expenses, we can now discuss profit. Now the profits formula is very simple. It is income minus expenses. So let's say Brenda had a wonderful month of sales and had a total income of 10,580 Rand. Now Brenda has to deduct all her expenses to determine her profit. Brenda made 10,580 Rand and her total expenses added up to 7,920 Rand. So how much profit did Bake at Brenda make? Well, that's 10,580 Rand minus 7,920 Rand which equates to 2,660 Rand. Hmm, but what if the expenses are more than the income? Well, this is where the business makes a loss. Now, what are losses? Well, it's the same formula that you use for profit to determine the loss. If the answer is below zero, the business made a loss. Brenda had a tough month. She made some costly renovations to her business. Brenda's total income was 9,822 Rand and her total expenses were 13,405 Rand. Determine her profit or loss. Let's put those numbers into the formula. Total income minus total expenses equates to profit or loss. 9,822 Rand minus 13,405 Rand equals a negative 3,583 Rand. She had a loss of 3,583 Rand that month. Let's test if you know the difference between profit and loss. Identify whether A and B indicate a profit or loss. This marks the end of lesson one. See you next time where we'll be continuing the exploration of accounting concepts. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. These lessons are very costly for us to produce, but we are very determined to keep it free for everyone. We produce these lessons at the rate at which it gets funded. So here are three ways to join hands with us to keep it free for all South African learners. First off, share our resources so that more people can benefit. Secondly, you can add us on my school as a beneficiary. This will help us immensely. Thirdly, we give Section 18A certificates, so your contribution will have a tax benefit. So let's join hands and collaborate for free quality education 
for all South Africans.